Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co host, Rich Gear, here with you. And uh, once again, as our guest, we have Derek. Hello. And uh, Derek is going to further explain. Well, first of all, the title of the show, Doug, is uh, God's Math Mathematical Blueprint. God's Mathematical Blueprint. We've been talking a lot about that, haven't we? Yes, we have. We, this guy is pretty amazing. And I have to admit. Well, God's amazing. <laughs> well, God's I'm just amazing. a weatherman mm -hmm. right now. But I always think it's amazing when a human being can figure out some of God's plans. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, God get, gives us revelation to, to get into it. He gives us impetus, and then he gives us uh, revelation to kind of figure certain things he's already got going on. It's like a, kind of like a scavenger hunt where he knows where all the, all the places are to start with, but he gets a big joy out of seeing us discover his his things in his creation yeah i know that he does that so no we're not talking about biblical numer numerology that, oh yes like. absolutely make that distinction no this is not numerology magic numbers or anything like that right. this is just Equal pure mathematics me letter sequencing Discrete nothing, mathematics. nothing no, not doing bible codes no bible codes no it's codes everything, is, everything, is, everything yeah. is very well written mm -hmm. in text plain plain understanding anybody can understand it and the, and the mathematics, you may not be familiar with mathematics, but it's mathematics that is taught in high school. Um, and it's easy to understand. It's basically one type of math that I use. And it's very, after you get used to it, it's easy to understand. Now, I find it interesting that uh, we have uh, projects like the SETI project, which uh, goes out and tries to find intelligent life out in the universe, you know. Listening to the radio, it reminds me of my days when I was a DXer, trying to listen to all these far away radio stations. And yeah, to see how I far remember away those days. Or so, and and short the, those were the, the days uh, where um, uh, one day I, I said to myself, I'd just gotten married, and I said, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing you got married. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but the, but any, in any event, just uh, kidding. Of course. Uh, here we have uh, uh, a situation where uh, people have criteria set up to detect if there's intelligent life coming from the signals from uh, outer space. Right. But how how come they can't detect intelligent life here on Earth uh, in its origin? I think that we should uh, be finding, here. trying to find it located here first, right? The, and and uh, listen to ourselves. Similarly, we can find uh, find the intelligence uh, in the design in the Bible uh, and how it relates to the design of uh, things in nature and also how the things uh, you know just are put together and this is what you're dis discovering yes, aren't the, you? the word criteria is an important uh, facet of anything any sort of scientific study you, to, you want to narrow it down to what's called a basis and uh, I've always been trying to find a mathematical basis for creation and going through the Bible going through a lot of the verses well, uh, why I've been would able you do to that? find I'm just why would you think there would be a mathematic? I'm just curious, how do you, what put you on that track? I, I was going to ask you that before. Well, later on, <laughs> uh, well, in our previous shows that I was a uh, party to, and also this show here, we'll be talking about what's called five and Natchy numbers. Right. And those are instances of numbers that we see a lot in plants. Um, uh, oh, numbers, right, frequency yeah, okay. of numbers that pop up, like in a sunflower we've talked about. If you count the number of spirals going counterclockwise versus clockwise, you always seem to count the same groups of numbers, similar groups of numbers, like 55 and 34, 34 and 20, uh, 21, and uh, numbers of spirals. And these numbers keep popping up a lot in flowers, Fibonacci numbers, threes and fives, groups. Of, and so that has prompted uh, a fascination on my part with trying to find if, if these numbers actually, if you can find them in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when I was still in school, um, I started uh, experimenting with series, which is adding, taking fractions of numbers and adding them up and seeing what they come up to and uh, seeing what the results are. And uh, I was inspired by a couple verses in the Bible, and uh, one is in Psalms 139, where it talks about where, that God created the, uh, 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 made the creation in a continuance. The creation was brought out in continuance. And, it was, and at the end, there's a sum. And as I said in one of the previous programs, that to me is a word problem. That to me defines a mathematical relationship. And then in Proverbs 8, it talks about how God actually used a compass as he prepared the heavens. Oh, yeah. And the compass has degrees, <coughs> zero degrees, 90 degrees, 360 degrees. So he used a compass, and the numbers were brought out in continuance, and, in, uh, and they resulted in a sum. 
That to me was a mathematical formula. Oh, it's funny you use the compass. I would have never thought about it as a literal compass. I was I mean, thinking like he encompasses, you know, he surrounds yes. everything. I was I've never gone there. So that you're a mathematical guy to start with. You know, like the thing that. what uh, Doug said earlier that I thought was pretty interesting, Doug, is like when they look to these intelligent signals, SETI, and they look to outer space aliens, and they look to uh, they look to everything. I, th I find that's very typical of the human condition when you refuse to look at what God has put right before you. Um, you start to look and try to find solutions that really are um, are fairly ridiculous a lot of times on the, on the face of it. Um, you, 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 for instance, you cannot, they don't, can't see uh, design. I, I still remember going to a Richard Dawkins presentation where he spent a whole lecture trying to tell you why a jet wing is designed but a bird's wing is not. Okay? Right. And I thought, this is, I, and I go, this is unreal. that work? It's, it's when you start looking when you refuse to look at what is right in front of you, um, and not, it's not always right in front of you. This thing you're discovering is a little bit, you gotta kinda delve into it a little bit to right. make it happen, but I still, I find it's very typical when you start good and away from biblical solutions, biblical answers, a biblical worldview, you start, start making very foolish and unwise uh, conclusions, decisions, and leaps of faith, quite frankly. So, um, without any further ado, that, that, so, that, that, uh, so those things you got, got uh, the number thing, you begin right. to realize that the, this universe was, was a, there's, there's numbers you can find in, right. in everything, obviously in nature. And, and the you know. design of, of Noah's Ark is right. one, one thing. Yeah, we talked yes. about that, yeah. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about what you think uh, is uh, unique about Noah's Ark. Right. And uh, I want to get to that, but I want to do a little bit of a review. I was kind of like Jacob in a way, where he like, he got grabbed a hold of God and said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Oh, yeah. And I kind of did the same thing with the Lord as far as, I'm not going to let go of this subject. I'm not going to let go of this until you show me some, in some fashion, that, you know, in my math and physics background, if you can show me what I'm looking for. You got a gimpy, you know, and you got a gimpy hip. And, and I got a gimpy hip, too, <laughs> no, I mean, from it. You know, I did get a gimpy hip from it, but I got... Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord answers prayer. You have to be yeah. careful what you ask for because yeah. mm -hmm. he, he's, he's uh, uh, revealed a lot to me through my uh, study of math and physics. But I wanted to review this, what this thing looks like. What is this, this uh, problem with the rotation of the compass and the succession? So this is a crude cartoon of the seven-day spiral. It's way, 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 way out of scale. Okay, But I wanted to get all seven rotations here to, uh, to describe what I'm talking about as far as the spiral goes. And what we've talked about in previous shows is, I'm hoping you all can see this, yeah, well, maybe is that uh, the days are brought out, uh, I, I, this, this, uh, these verses bring out a, describe a rotating compass, it, bring, it, it, it describes a sum that's being created and it's also something that's in continuance. So this pattern right here going in circles, going round and around, is a pattern that's brought out compass-wise, degrees, and it's also brought out in succession because I have uh, points along this compass. And as, as, as the spiral progresses, more and more points accumulate. For example, here, you see this number, it's 54, take my word for it. There's 54 points between this line, which is, this is the night side and this is the day side. There's 54 points from this point to this point. And there's 90 points from this point to this point. So as the spiral progresses and goes out, these points accumulate. And they accumulate, and you can tabulate them according to what angle they occur, because every point occurs at a different angle. Now the spiral expands. As the spiral uh, expands. Exactly. Now the spiral, like you've got it tightly wound. Very tightly got, wound. Very very but, tightly wound. But uh, the spiral, when you actually plot it out, is. The way I plot it out, it'd probably be up to the ceiling. Just these seven rotations. But what we we <coughs> talked about in the last couple shows is that these seven rotations of Earth as it was being created is likened unto seven rotations of this spiral, which is called a logarithmic spiral. It's a, uh, a mathematical spiral that is a uh, precursor or the progenitor of what's called the exponential function, which is the number e. Just like we had National Pi Day, the 3.141e. Yeah, yeah. And I misspoke, I actually heard this, I misspoke mm -hmm. on the last show. It's 2.71 and so on and so on. I yeah, said 2.718, 2.8, 1.8. Exactly. 
Something so like that's, that, that's sure. the exponential E. And that exponential function is used in all sciences as far as describing the growth of things or the energy of things. Um, so this is a very, very well-documented mathematical relationship that we've correlated to not only just the Bible verses, not what the Bible says, but also we are able the, other, the last couple weeks correlate this to the uh, periodic table. So the question is, now we've, since we've reviewed this, um, we're going to talk about Noah's Ark now because Noah's Ark was created from this creation and, and it was created from these numbers because this, this was creation, okay? So we have all these uh, potential occupancies or this toolbox of numbers that we can use to make stuff. The, wh how we applied it in the previous shows is we used elements. Like down here for the first three spirals, we were able to develop elements, hydrogen all the way to uh, copper and zinc. And uh, being uh, 29, element 29, element 30 being zinc. And, uh, and th that's where that led up right here on the spiral number three. But a as time went on, this, this spiral was still in effect up until the flood. So when the ark was built, I was thinking, I must be able to take this work and correlate this to the ark. I hadn't done that. I, I, I just, that was a guess that I made that this spiral and its, num and its numbers that it brings, I should be able to see these numbers in the ark. And the answer to that question is yes, you can. And, and beyond my wildest dreams, you can. And that's what I'm going to describe in this show here. All right. Wow, great. Um, Rock on, right? Okay, so let's talk about the ark first. I'm going to set this down so I can right. have my hands free, but we'll refer to the list a lot later. Is that we want to talk about Noah's ark and Noah's ark dimensions. Now, what I've done with Noah's ark, I'm not going to be really talking about so much every aspect of Noah's ark. I'm going to talk about Noah's ark in a way that I don't believe anybody ever has. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about Noah's ark as a purely mathematical structure, just the pure essence of it. I'm not going to be talking about animals or anything, feasibilities or anything like that. I'm going to talk about how the ark was 50 wide, 50 cubits wide, and I use the, the relative measure that the Bible uses. I don't okay. convert to feet or anything like that. It's unnecessary. 50, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits tall. All right. Right. And uh, also, 45 it's, wide, right? It's, uh, right. It's, it's, it's 50 wide and 30 50 tall. Wide. 30 tall, yeah. And it has three floors, yeah. 300 cubits 300 long. Cubits we're not going to get into the length, and we're not going to really talk about the entire arc because this, this type of structure here is if you took the arc, if you, if you liken the arc to like a loaf of bread, yeah. and you took one a slice, slice. Okay, I this is that. one, this okay. is the majority of the arc is a slice just like this. Now, we also know that the, the arc had walls. So there's other types of slices. There's this type of slice, and you also have wall slices. The wall slices are way beyond the scope of this program, but they, they do fit into all this. But I'm going to wow. talk about the easiest mm -hmm. one right yeah, here. Yeah, do the easy one for me. These yeah. are the, this is the easiest one right here. Okay, so this one I'm holding right here, this big number 252, this is how many cubital logs. This, yeah. this is if you wanted to build the slice of the arc with logs, and you had one cubit logs. It would take 252 of them to make this structure. Okay. So there you have 252. There's a number. Mm -hmm. right. okay, so remember that number. Let's talk about the arc has to have pitch. So it takes 164 pitch particles. Now this is big, huge cubit chunks of pitch. What I found is you can use this cubit chunk of pitch. It's going to be able to pitch this arc, the outside of it and the inside of it. Just like the Bible says, it's pitched within and without. 164, if you count the red squares, 164 squares to make the pitch, on, which would be on the outside. These red squares would reside on the outside, mathematically, on the outside of this arc slice. But you're not making the, 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 the they're not a cubit thicker. I mean, they're, they're what, what this cubic, if you take, and this is just kind of like a technicality mm -hmm. aside. But you could take half of this cubit would be on the outside, half of it would be on the inside. You know what I mean? You, oh. you, so you'd have a cubit of material to use to pitch the inside and the That's outside. That's a lot of thick. And it's lot very of thick. thick. Yeah. Wow. You're going to use a lot of it. Mm. So mathematically, this works out this way. 
So, what are the significance of those numbers? Uh, we're gonna get. We're, we will get yeah. into that. Yeah. I have a little bit more explaining to do before we. I'm more explaining to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> now, here I wanted to bring this graph out, and, and uh, we're gonna have the graph probably put up on the, uh, the screen for y'all. But uh, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that the Fibonacci series, which is a series of numbers that was uh, discovered. And the creation function, or if you want to call it the logarithmic spiral, have a correlation of 99 or 0.998%. What you're going to find, some of the numbers that I'm going to be explaining or talking about are going to be like one too high over here, maybe one too low over here. Everything's plus or minus one because we're dealing with discrete numbers. Mm -hmm. Just one, two integers, three, four. And it's not exact, exact. But I'll explain how the Fibonacci series can be exact when stuff comes out of the arc. But even before when it goes into the arc, the creation function does very, very well make Fibonacci numbers all the way up through. I, I do the study to 144, which is really the, the nuts and bolts of the arc. Because the 144, just to cut to the chase a little bit, this space up here is 144 spaces for occupancies. On the third deck? On the, for their deck and it's on the second deck. Okay, that's 100. That, this is 144. Oh, I'm sorry, this is 200, 288 all the way across. Half is 144. Halfway is 144. Okay. 288 okay. all the way across. Right. Almost. That's just cut to the chase a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to start filling there. I want to get a little drink of water for yeah. here first. So what do you all think so far? I'm going to fill it. I'm kind of buzzing right now. Are you, yeah. are you getting all this, Doug? This is a little, I got to tell you, this is a little bit above I'm my all, I'm kind of depending on you guys yeah. to slow me down a little bit because uh, I'm going to rock and roll through this, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that everybody gets that. I want the math magicians out here to tune in to really get, they're going to they're gonna probably get fired up about this thing. You okay. Know? So what we're going to do, and I'm going to try to interject throughout my discussion here is what the significance of this is. And I'm going to state what it is that I'm trying to show first. What I'm trying to show is that piece by piece you can take chunks of the spiral in their fullness mm -hmm. and they and they go into the arc in their fullness very neatly like this 90 and this 54 if you add those together that's 144 that's 144 and that's mm -hmm. okay that's a fibonacci number okay you know if you take 70 and and actually my spiral generates 146 which is one of the ones that are mm -hmm. a little off 74 and 72 on um, this sixth, the sixth night, the night, the night six. It's 146. 146, which correlates to the 144 if you take all the other numbers in, in consideration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this uh, one by one here. We've discussed the arc diagram. So okay, so day six, we want to get arc wood. We want to get the 252. Okay, so right here is my 252. We start uh, day six, this gray portion right here. Now I actually go a little bit above here. I go eight above the, uh, the night day boundary. Um, I don't have the exact answer for that, but since it's eight above and we do have eight human being occupancies, and since the arc is, a, uh, uh, is also a model for the human body or the temple, which is a human body, um, I, I would suppose that that could be, it's, it's plausible that that could represent the eight souls aboard the ark. But I'm not going to, that's not really the focus of my talk today. But I do have a little bit of interesting, you know? hand mm -hmm. that's, that's plausible. Okay, so here's your 252 very, very neatly. I can also do the 252 another way, the way that I prefer to do it. I did it this way, it's equally good. I did it this way so it shows the Fibonacci a little bit more, but I also could do it from 616 back to 365. It's really kind of more correct to do it that way because 365 is also a very significant number and it's more correct as far as the arc in its totality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's one day. And that's not even the most impressive day. Oh. We have okay. So next is we go from uh, the 373 point to the 300 point. So I'm, you're gonna have to, okay, so the 370 point, three point here. I didn't wanna clutter this too, up with, too much up with numbers. So we're going from here 
to 300. This is actually the point, we know that the arc was 300 long. This was actually the point where the arc was loaded. And we'll, we'll show that that's, that's actually the case later on when we uh, look at the, our, the verses that actually back a lot of these numbers up. Okay. So here's uh, 373 to 300. We, got the three, we have the 74. What, no, what is 74? The 74 we use for one half of the pitch on the bottom of the arc. Okay, so since we're building the arc with the materials we get from the creation function, as just like Noah had to, he had to build the arc with the, cre the materials he had at hand from creation. Okay, so we're building and we're filling in probably, here's 50 and then here's about 24. We're, we're starting to fill in the pitch of the arc. And then the next one, from 300 to 227, we have, here's 300, 227 is right here on the line. We have another 72. So we've used exactly, now the 144, actually 146, but we've used a Fibonacci to be a complete day or night six to build part of the arc. So that, that 72 goes for payload. So we have to remember that 72 is now inside. <laughs> and 72 happens to be half of the 144, which I explained is Fibonacci on one side. I have another diagram that I'll show just a little bit better. But I'll show it a little bit later. Yeah, I want to put these on the, yeah. on the screen, right? Yeah. yeah, we're going to be putting all these up on the screen. Yeah, so you'll be able to get a chance to see okay, it, you know? So, so next, we have... Uh, from we went to 227. Now we go from 227 to 137, which is another significant number in science, but I'm not going to say where it is. We have 90. Oh, that's really rotten. <laughs> <laughs> the fine structure constant. Okay. Okay, so that 90 is used for the rest of the arc pitch. So we had 74 here, and this 90 together make 164 which is the arc pitch. So we're finished with the pitch. And we're finished with the wood. So, it, so now we have an arc structure with three floors, 50 by 30, that's fully built with all the pitch. And now next we have... You're talking about the pitch, you're talking about the physical gunk. The gunk. They, that, that they put on the If you can imagine getting like a hard block of gunk, which is about a cubit, melting it down and having yeah. a pail and uh, however they okay. applied it. You can apply half yeah. the bucket to one side, yeah. outside, half the bucket on the inside. Gotcha. That's what okay. we're talking mm. about. So it's going right. to melt, but I have to mm. account for it some way. I attributed a cubit to it just as a guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's plausible based on what you're plausible. saying. It's yeah. plausible. Mm -hmm. And uh, had pennies and dimes on my table for a couple of years and kept playing around with it until it worked out. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you know, so wow. That's, this was a long time coming. This sounds really simple and easy just to throw it down, but this took a lot Doesn't of years. Doesn't sound simple and easy to me. No, is it I, you? I think it's just, I'm just throwing it down. Wild, yeah. Okay, so then I have one more here because I want to finish up the, uh, or I have two more. So I think we've done the 90. Okay. Yep. So now we have one more aspect. We want to finish part of the payload. We have a payload of 72. Now we have, we're going to use an additional 54, which is another Fibonacci number correlated. So, now, so far we've used a, a 90, which is correlated to the 89. We used a 54 now, which is correlated to the 55. And we use 70, the 72 and the 74, which is correlated to the 144. So the, this is how the arc is Fibonacci based. And I'll show you later, we, we're using scripture, that these numbers pop up. And then finally, after the 54, 72 and 54 for payload. I use the last four spirals for a total of 82 particles. Mm. So I just kind of group all these together. This is all Fibonacci mm. also, but it gets so small that it, you can't really see okay. the significance. Well, you're going to have to get into your scriptures here pretty soon. I'm co there comes a few, a few minutes here. Yes, okay. In fact, we'll do it right now. Oh, that's well, let's point. go for it. Okay, so we're going to. Um, Genesis would refer to Genesis um, 8 4, and it's when the ark is coming to rest. Oh. And the ark is coming to rest on the mountain. 
That's what uh, Genesis 8, 4. Bottom of ark needs a place to land. We've already told you that the pitch, the pitch to the bottom of the ark first was the 74 number. Okay, so that, that number isn't explicitly said at, at this point in 8.4. But 8.4 to 8.5, it talks about 73 days of the drying function. 73 days of drying the ark. After the ark landed, there was drying that it Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, so we had the place where the ark landed that needed to be prepared plus the 73 days of drying additional so that we've accounted for these two, the 74 and the 72, which correlates to that 73 that's necessary, and the 74 for a place to land. That's one. That's one. Uh, Genesis 8.5 to 8.13 gives 89 more days of drying, which correlates to this 90, and this 89 here. So that's Fibonacci number, number for number. And then we have Genesis 8, 13 to 8, 14, which is the next success of drying. This is the drying that happens where Noah's looking. He sees dry land, mm -hmm. but God does not give him the instruction to come out after he has dried the earth for another 56 days. So that's where this comes in here. This 55, 56, 55, 54, 56 days correlates to the Fibonacci sequence. And so you're finding all these number cor correlations throughout Scripture, yes. uh, just uh, in terms of uh, uh, Noah's Ark. And uh, I, I presume that you're going to uh, probably publish a paper where you detail the whole uh, gamut of how this all works out. Yes. But uh, you're just giving a few examples of, of right. the whole Yeah, this is a few correlations. Right. What, are, what are some, I mean, we're talking about the temple. So that's, that's got some of this Fibonacci, some of this number, this, some of this stuff. Are there other things that you've discovered that uh, have this kind of sequencing? And I do. There, the ark, I've only unfolded this part of the ark. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, I put everything off to one side for clarity, but also everything is put to one side for a, a particular purpose, which is there are examples of nature of this, um, having everything shoved over to one side. But I, I do believe that everything was put over to one side after the ark, when it describes that Noah mm -hmm. removed the covering of the ark, and he had all this time. He was starting to maneuver things around, move things around, starting to remove the whole of the ark while in anticipation of leaving. Plus with all the animals aboard, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also we know that um, he was releasing birds. Not all the birds came back that he was releasing. Since he was removing the covering of the ark, we know that we had some uh, opportunity for some of the, the creeping things potentially to escape before God told mm -hmm. them to come out. But here's the, uh, um, the green squares represent the, uh, the 82, or actually if you, if you count these, there's the 84. The yellow squares represent the 126, which if you count them, they're actually 124. If you remember, my, I showed you the picture and you asked me why the two yellows were down here. Yeah. Um, part of the answer is that because of this 144 actually on my spiral is 146, it has to borrow two from down here. <laughs> okay. Why that is, all I can say is this isn't the only frame of the arc. There's about 200, there's a 200, actually 234 more of these, and there are 65 wall frames of the arc. So mm -hmm. this isn't the entire arc. You're going to have little cutaways in some parts for, for uh, floors and stuff like that for people to Right, 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 right. Wow, we're, we, we've used up the time already, Doug. I, so like I said, we were just getting started. Yeah, wow. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll have you, uh, um, we'll reference your uh, publication that you're coming out with us uh, yes. pretty soon. We'll, we'll have to uh, leave you now on Revolution Against Evolution. We hope you enjoyed our, our discussion here. We're just getting started, I'm afraid. <laughs> we'll see you next time.